Have I been practicing uh, self-care? Have I been spending time with myself? Have I been giving myself my own love? Or have I been giving it to everyone else? It's really just tuning in and realizing that, you know, your love is your power. You have the control over it. You can let everything take your attention and your power away, or you can put that energy back into yourself. That is a beautiful self-love loop right there. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Seek the Joy podcast. Happy Seek the Joy Tuesday. I'm your host, Sydney Weiss, and this month is really all about self-love and valuing yourself and knowing your worth. That's really been the focus on the podcast. We kicked it off with our conversation with Laura Banky, all about remembering that you are lovable right now. Last week, our conversation with Magali Renee was all about breaking through fear with compassion, and this week... It's really about making self-love a practice, and I'm so excited for this conversation. I'm joined by Jenna Banks. She's an entrepreneur, public speaker, author, podcast host, real estate investor, and self-love advocate, and her new book, I Love Me More, How to Find Happiness and Success Through Self-Love, comes out next month. And in it, she really crushes the myth about how we should relate to ourselves. Honestly, Jenna's mission is really all about helping you stop freely giving giving all of your power away and start understanding your worth. And she does that through really helping us explore not only what self-love is, but the ways in which we stop ourselves from embracing and acknowledging our own self-love. And even before I dive in to today's episode and what we talk about, I just want to give a little disclaimer that Today's episode does feature some conversation around suicide and suicidal ideation. And if this is a topic or a conversation that you are particularly sensitive to, just skip the first half, maybe the first five minutes or so of today's episode. But I I just want to make sure we acknowledge it because if you or someone you know is struggling with mental health, There's so many incredible resources out there, including the Suicide Prevention Lifeline, where they have 24-7 free and confidential support um, for you or anyone in your life. And so I just feel it's important to share about that here. Share the hotline number, which is 1-800-273-8255. Just really felt it was necessary to give this disclaimer at the top of the episode. So honestly, there's no really smooth way to transition, but... I want to share with you a little bit about what we talk about in today's new episode. Jenna dives into her self-love journey and why your love is really your power. And in that conversation, we talk about how we can begin to find the courage to walk away from the known and into the unknown. So much of our conversation too focuses on how you can really live a fuller, more rewarding life by embracing your own value and power and making self-love a lifestyle choice, making it a practice, and why self-love, choosing your own self-love, isn't always easy. Jenna shares with us how we can create a self-love loop and the seven saboteurs of self-love, why it's important not to ignore your instincts, and how we can begin to find happiness and success through self-love. Plus, Jenna shares her biggest dream, what she hopes readers will take away from her new book, how we can really begin to strengthen our relationships with ourselves, and so much more. Now more than ever, I just think it's so important that we have reliable resources that we can turn to. And that's where today's sponsor, BetterHelp, comes in. So I would love to share with you a little bit more about BetterHelp. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And it's easy and free to change counselors if you don't think the person you've matched with is a good fit. And no matter where you're listening to Seek the Joy podcast right now, you can also use BetterHelp because the service is available for people worldwide too. I just think it's so valuable to talk to someone about what it is that you're going through, whether that's anxiety, depression, grief, loss, changes at work, or friendship dynamics, or relationships, or you want to talk about the challenges of the last couple of years. And BetterHelp offers a broad range of expertise in their counselor network, so you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions too, which I still think is a game changer. 
I really want you to live a happier, more joyful, and just ease-filled life. That's why I share these conversations with you. And so I'm just excited to share that as a listener of Seek the Joy podcast, you will get 10% off your first month by going to betterhelp.com slash seek the joy. Join over 1 million people and counting taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash seek the joy. The link will also be included in our show notes. I really loved sitting down with Jenna and having this conversation for the podcast. I think there was so much value in recognizing our own worth, our own value, our own power. There's something that Jenna says in this episode that your love is your power. And I think that is just so beautiful and so true. And so as always, I can't wait to hear what you think about this one. Make sure to join the conversation on our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We are at Seek the Joy Podcast everywhere. No matter where you're listening right now, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon. Uh, Hit follow or subscribe and leave the show a five-star rating and review. It always helps the podcast get seen by new people. And uh, what else? Oh, next week is our break week for the month of February. We will not air a new episode next Tuesday, but I'll be back here March 1st with a brand new conversation. And uh, without further ado, let's dive into this one. I love me more making self-love a practice with Jenna Banks. a really good place to start might be with your own self-love journey, how you got to this book and this work. So if we could start there, that would be awesome. Okay. Yes. I'm happy to share. And thank you so much for having me on, by the way, Sydney. I love what you're doing with your show and I'm really honored to be here today. Uh, My journey to self-love was not an easy one. You know, I wish I could say I read a book and boom, I got self-love. If only it was that easy. You know, I wish. Yeah. If only it was that simple. And and it's kind of a bummer today when it seems like that's kind of what it seems to be reduced down to is like, oh, self-love is going to the spa or self-love is getting a pedicure. It is so, so much more than that. And mine was a very long, arduous, tumultuous journey. I had a really rough childhood. Um, I, uh, I basically left home at the age of 14 because it was a very, very strict home, left my one home to another parent's home, which was a whole nother, very toxic situation. Um, and basically I was on my own, basically at 16, my poor neighbors felt really sorry for me. And they kind of said, Hey, why don't you come stay with us? We're moving down South about an hour. You want to come stay with us? Well, by that time I had been to so many high schools. Mm. Um, I wasn't really even going to school much at all. Um, and so by the time I landed, you know, I was jumping around from friend's house to my grandmother's to wherever I eventually landed at a, a friend of mine's house and her mom was so nice to take me in and, and, uh, have a roof over my head that was stable. She said, Go, you can enroll in school here. And so I did, and I stayed there for a while, which was great, but unfortunately school was just not on top of my mind. I had too many other issues going on. So I ended up, uh, focusing on working full time, dropped out of high school, Uh, And then I got to the point where, you know, I'd been through so much, I really became numb. I was emotionally Mm -hmm. numb and I I just couldn't feel anything, not good, not bad, not happy, not sad. I just felt nothing. I'd been through far too much and I just shut down and um, I got to the place where unfortunately I was very suicidal. I didn't want to live anymore. And I, uh, I had multiple suicide attempts. Uh, The last one was almost successful, landed me in the hospital uh, in a coma for several days, had to have my stomach pumped. I was, uh, you know, when I came out of it, I still didn't, you know, I'd always had this, ever since I got the idea of suicide in my mind, I thought I will die. I'm going to be successful at this. I'm going Mm -hmm. to eventually not be around. And, um, and, you know, something changed. I think it was uh, maybe focusing on my career at the time. I got a GED, so got that out of the way, Mm -hmm. got into work, and then ended up getting pregnant at the age of 19. Married at 19, moved to the Netherlands. Now I have to say, it might sound like, oh my gosh, wow, all of this and then pregnant. But you know what? That pregnancy actually, I think saved me because Mm -hmm. um, it turned on the hormones. Mm -hmm. I started feeling better. uh, uh, I I started feeling, I Mm -hmm. I had to process all these emotions that I wasn't used to feeling. Yeah, something shifted in that moment. Yeah, something major shifted. And 
So I just started to tune into these feelings, you know, pay attention to them. It's, I don't know if that's what started that whole, like really tuning into my energy and my feelings, but, um, but I started to really pay attention to them and let them kind of guide me. Mm -hmm. And that really became my true North. Now I had my son to ground me, thank God. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, all the suicidal tendencies went away. Um, and then I just got real focused on my career and, you know, I started, um, I realized that my marriage wasn't working. I wasn't happy. Now I started to tune into those feelings like, Hey, you know what? I'm not happy. This isn't, this isn't, there's gotta be more than this. And I'd already been tough enough to leave some rough situations. So I thought I don't have to stay in a bad situation. I can follow my happiness and let that kind of guide me. And so mm -hmm. I did, I got out of that marriage at the age of 22, single mom, 22 mm -hmm. on my own. Uh, and, um, and then I really started my self-love journey at that point. I started really listening to what was right for me and what was wrong for me and, and not letting obligation keep me anywhere because I'd already been strong enough to, you know, get out of toxic relationships with my parents and all of that. Eventually, by the way, I, I had to cut those relationships off. They kind of naturally cut themselves off, but that also lifted this huge weight off of my shoulders. And I realized mm -hmm. that there's no, you know, I was, I was in those relationships out of familial obligation, but you don't have to stay in any kind of a toxic relationship, whether it is your husband, your, you know, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your partner, your whatever, um, including your parents. And I'll tell you when the, those connections completely went away, it was like a huge weight was lifted off of my shoulders. Hmm. And so that, that really just, that was the beginning of my self love journey and also just paying attention to what felt good for me. So I have this phrase, I say, your love is your power. Mm -hmm. And truly, when you're giving so much of your love away outside of yourself, uh, trying to chase love from other people, trying to, uh, you know, find your worth and your value from either your job or the people in your lives or having children or whatever it is, you're always putting it outside of yourself, your power, your love is your power. So imagine you're looking for that power in others. You're saying, hey, I'm going to invest so much of myself into you. And you end up draining mm -hmm. yourself instead of giving back to yourself. And so over time, what I learned to do is give my love back to myself and feel like powerful, essentially, mm -hmm. which is full of my own power, mm -hmm. my own love. And what that did is I noticed it reflected around me in such a beautiful way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I could see it in other people, like, I, I could, I could impact them in a positive way. Like my presence was lifting them up. Mm -hmm. Now imagine going from a place of being suicidal and not wanting to live and saying, I just want to die to like going, wow, I can not only positively affect myself. I can really affect others around me by being in a state of loving myself, valuing myself, feeling worthy, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's been my journey. Wow. I mean, I don't even know where to start. What an incredible journey, first of all. And thank you for sharing all of that. And I imagine, I imagine there are aspects of it that are easier to share than others. So thank you for, for sharing all of that with us. I, I love what you said that love is your power. And that in essence, by embracing this aspect of love, of self-love for yourself, you're embracing your own value and your own power. But the journey of recognizing your own value, right, is always um it's not an easy one necessarily. And I think there's something in the book that you say that self-love isn't something we're born with, but rather there's something that we have to work towards. Yeah. And that resonated so much with, for me, because recognizing your self-worth working towards it is the same thing to me, self-love as recognizing your value. And so how did you start to make self-love or recognizing your own worth or your own value, um, a practice or an action, so to speak, rather than just saying, Oh, it's, it's just there. It's something I'm working towards. How, how did you start to do that? Because to talk about going from being suicidal saying, mm -hmm. I'm going to be successful in this and mm -hmm. what a beautiful transformation in 180, by the way. Um, I mean, it sounds like in some ways you really made self-love a lifestyle choice. Yep. Does that sound crazy to say? I don't know. It's just no. the word that kind of came to mind as I was thinking through that. 
It's very true. I'm going to tell you a quick story because I think it'll help make the connection for you. It's what made the connection for me yeah. when I realized, oh, I have been choosing self-love as a journey all along. I hadn't actually even heard the term of self-love until mm -hmm. not, not that long ago, right before I started writing the book. I just, I was like, oh, well, that's what I've been doing. I, I, I had broken and, and I really do think it comes from these being in these toxic situations, you know, we're, we're brought relationships into our life for a reason. Mm -hmm. Either, you know, a friend of mine recently told me, I love the saying, she's like, it's, it's either a blessing or a lesson. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of lessons through my relationships. And I remember I broke up with somebody I was really in love with. I had been dating him for about five months and I could just tell that he's not going to be able to meet my needs it's not, it, it, I had these discussions with him. I really loved him so much. I had a really deep feeling of love for him, but I also knew I wasn't going to get what I needed. And I just trusted that my instinct was telling me, get out. I've always learned to listen to my instincts. So I yeah. listened, even though my heart was like, stay, stay. So I broke my heart, got out, went to dinner with a friend of mine who knew us both. And she was like, why would you break up with someone you love? I don't understand. I know in her mind, she's thinking, I'm going to talk her into getting back together with him. And I was like, uh, I go, uh, literally the first thing I said out of my mouth when she said, well, why? I said, well, because I love me more. Mm. It was a very nonchalant thing that I threw out there because for me, it was very natural at that point to choose myself and put myself first. And she's like, she looked at me flabbergasted like what do you mean I don't understand and I was like what do you mean what do I mean I choose myself I value myself more than I value anybody else in my life if I'm not getting what I need if I'm not happy I put myself first and I get out of that situation and she's like still baffled I don't get it but you're in love with them yeah I am and I'm breaking my heart and I feel horrible but I'd rather go through that bad feeling and know that I'm making the right choice for myself and she was just like still flabbergasted so I did my best to really tell her look here's how I got there I had a long art you know it was a it was a hard fought battle over my life try to give her a few examples and she left dinner and I, I didn't know this at the time but she left that dinner thinking about it for a while and because she was so perplexed, she'd never really conceived of this idea before. And she was my age too. Um, and so she, one day she uh, called me, I think it was, I don't know, maybe a handful of weeks later. And she says, oh my gosh, Jenna, I got it. It clicked. Mm -hmm. uh, she's like, I've been in the situation with this guy I've been dating. You know, I knew her situation. He was sending her text messages that she couldn't understand. Like, like, um, I don't know, just like, you know, those cryptic text messages when you're dating someone, you're trying to assume things and figure it out. Oh, he cares, but he's just busy and whatever. But you're feeling that feeling of like, um, what's he doing? Does he like me? Does he, you know, does he well, really you're filled care? with like doubt and anxiety in those moments, right? It's unclear. Yeah, exactly. Totally. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So she didn't know, did he value me? Did he not value me? And it clicked for her. She's like, oh my goodness. She's like, by allowing this kind of behavior ongoing in my life where I'm constantly feeling anxiety and insecure and not confident that I wasn't valuing myself mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. And she just said it was almost like this third party kind of situation where it was like herself looking back at herself in the mirror. And she's like, I need to value myself. Like I'm this third party person. And it clicked and she literally cut the relationship off, felt very empowered over it, never looked back. And a year later, she ends up in a relationship with a very loving man who values her mm -hmm. as much as she values herself. And that for me was really the realization of, so she asked me, she said, Jenna, this was really powerful for me. I've talked to my friends about it. We call it, I love me more. This is before I started writing the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's like, it'd be really helpful to understand, you know, how you got to this place where you could, you know, without question, without hesitation, choose yourself. And I said, wow, okay, let me I need to think about this. Like, what were the steps? What was the journey? Because she wanted to know. And so I started writing in the, my journal about it. And I thought, you know what? There's something here. There, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, I read a book and I got there. It mm -hmm. was, I had years and years, a lifetime of a journey 
of trial and error and Lift a lot, experience. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. lot of error, a lot of error, but you know, there it's not so simple. And that's why I, I knew I had to write the book because there's so much to learn, including, um, you know, I don't know if you've gotten to this part, Sydney, but we know as women, especially I wrote the book for women and it's not that men don't need this message. So many men need this message, but I'm a woman and I know the things that could have sabotaged my ability to love mm -hmm. myself. And, you know, as women, we are raised to, from a little girl to be in tune with our emotions. Little boys are taught, you know, Hey, you don't show your emotions. That's not being a man. Men think that they need to show a boy what being a man is. And mm -hmm. you know, we get modeled what a woman is by, you know, those around us. But did you know that we form 95% of our beliefs by the age of nine years old, mm. like beliefs, not like we hardwire what we think about the world around us, including what a woman is, you know, who we are, you know, all of that by the age of nine. And so our mothers and our grandmothers and the women around us show us that self-sacrifice is a virtue. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's so interesting because as women too, we're often shown that if you're not being nurturing, if you're not giving to someone else, you're acting selfish, which then brings about this thought that we've debunked, I think on the podcast before. And I think you work to debunk this in your podcast and in the book and in the work that you share that self-love is not selfish, that yeah. it's actually this act of pouring into yourself of saying, I love me more, right. Yeah. Of, um, putting your needs first and at the forefront and taking care of you and actually learning to value you in those moments that then allows you to pour into others in a way that's actually meaningful for you. And that allows you to embrace that self-love, self-worth, and that value that um, is sometimes not always the most inherent thing. And there's something that you said about that story with your friend that I think is so powerful. Um, and I wrote it down and it's this idea that I think we think self-love is supposed to feel really good, right? right? And it's supposed to be easy, but the first time, and not even the first time, but those moments when you're actually practicing self-love, it's not going to feel good. You said it broke your heart to walk away from a relationship, um, that you, you were, you were in love, you, you felt good about, but then you were questioning all these different things. You, you, it doesn't feel good at the beginning to choose mm -hmm. yourself. And sometimes doing what is the most loving, the most caring, the most nurturing for you, right. It requires a more challenging, difficult, um, maybe sometimes painful decision in that moment. So it's really about, I just, what you said just really struck me. I love me more is really about choosing you, even if it doesn't feel easy in yeah, that moment. So Absolutely. true. Yeah. I couldn't have said it better myself than me because it's really hard much of the time, like yeah. so much of the time. The easy part is the you know, self-care and all of that. The hard times are the ones that really challenge us. That's when we really have to fight for ourselves the most. One of my most challenging situations are boundaries because oh, yeah. like I was mentioning earlier, you know, as, as women were, as little girls, you know, we're bred to people please and to invest so much of our energy into how others feel and how they feel about us. So it's about taking care of other people's feelings ahead of our own. And what happens is then we go into adulthood and we allow everyone to cross our boundaries because there are no such thing as boundaries. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you're trying to take care of everybody else's feelings, then how are you taking care of your own at the same totally. time? You're not. Totally. And so what happens is, and we, I'm telling you it now this is now that I'm doing this, like as a practice, as a, I'm teaching this, um, I really set out to be the master of my boundaries. And I realized that, um, my bound, this first off has been one of my biggest challenges, my, my entire life, even to this day, I, I can say I've pretty much mastered it, but I can't say it hasn't come easy. It was mm. hard, hard, hard. And it took years, like literally years of conscious practice to go, this person's making me feel uncomfortable. I'm going to say something. I'm going to stand up for that myself. I'm going to say, Hey, that's not cool. I don't appreciate that. Yeah. And, and at first it feels so uncomfortable beyond, so, right? beyond uncomfortable. Yes. You totally. think they're going to see me as a, a bitch or whatever, but you know what? I found none of those fear-based beliefs 
to actually be true. Mm -hmm. And so when I learned to face those fears and actually stand up for myself and honor the feeling, first off, the hard work is the first part of the hard work is tuning into the feeling. Mm -hmm. you know, I talked about earlier about, you know, me learning to really pay attention to my feelings that became part of it as well as how do I really feel right now? And honoring that that's not easy. That's one of the first hard steps. Yeah. Then the second step is getting past what will they think of me, or I'm going to upset, am I going to upset this person, or what will they think of me to, hey, you know, that quick, instant, I don't appreciate that, or that didn't make me feel good, or hey, you know, this not, don't touch me like that, or whatever it is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you can get there. And once you get there, I can tell you from experience now, it feels freaking phenomenal. Like it feels so good because guess what? That we, the love is your power. Every single time you let someone cross a boundary and you feel a little disempowered, a little icky, a little drained, that's your power that you're giving away. Mm -hmm. I love what you said about boundaries because we often don't think about self-love and its connection to boundaries. And there are so many beautiful benefits, right? To embracing your own self-love. We talked about um, choosing it as a lifestyle. We've talked about understanding your own value, your own self-worth, but this piece about boundaries is a huge element of, of self-love because in asserting your boundaries and knowing your boundaries. So even before you assert boundaries, you need to know what your boundaries are. Yeah. Once you begin the under, to understand what your boundaries are and you start to assert them, Again, another scenario where it doesn't always feel good at first because you're worried, like you shared about hurting someone's feelings or what are they going to think about me? But the moment that you embrace and choose your own boundaries, it allows you to um, sort of, I don't think the word I'm th searching for is course correct because that's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking more along the lines of you start to recognize that it's okay to be who you are and to uh, assert what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. And at the end of the day, what someone else thinks is none of my business, right? About me asserting what I'm comfortable with. I'm curious about like other benefits maybe of self-love um, that maybe come to mind for you. And, and I know that you explore some of these in the book as well. Mm -hmm. Other benefits, um, maybe like tangible benefits of self-love that maybe we often don't, don't think about. Well, right away, it's the, the, I mean, right away is the power. So I, I talk about this concept also in my book called the power container. So this will hopefully give a good visual. Um, so the power container is something I like, it's something that imagine you have it, it's resting in your soul. It's imaginary. It, if you put your hand, your one hand below, below your stomach and your other hand, like at your top of your chest. So it's just like vessel that's like a foot and a half long, tall. And imagine when it's filled all the way up to the top, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. I know what I feel like. Um, I feel like on top of the world, I go, I go to the grocery store and random strangers like start talking to me, right? They're magnetized to you. And you're just like blasting your car in your car, your favorite music, you're doing your car dance, you're just how you know, you know, when you feel full mm -hmm. of your power or your love. And we also know what the opposite feels like, right? We feel, we feel disempowered, icky, demotivated, not worthy, not valuable, insecure, not confident. We don't think we can accomplish the things that we set our mind to. So my goal is always to be what I call on power full, which is basically full of my power. Mm. So how do you do that? You monitor yourself every day throughout the day. And I've been doing this like pretty much most of my adult life. I just didn't, I didn't have it down in writing in an actual concept that I could put down like I did in my book. Uh, eventually, at first, it was just like tuning into the energy. But over time, I came to realize that, yeah, you fill up and that's your love. And so how you have to know the ways that you fill up and you also have to know the ways that you're drained. So I cover all those things in my book, but the ways you fill up include spending time doing things that make you happy. Because the truth is, you're the only one that can make yourself happy. Mm -hmm. You have to take responsibility for your happiness. It's nobody else's job, not your partner, not your kids, not your parents, not anyone. So you take responsibility for your happiness. And how do you do that? You do things that make you happy regularly and you make it a priority. 
Hmm. You know, make it a priority. What did I do today? How do I feel? Tune into my power container. Am I half empty? Am I depleted? Am I full? Great. Just make sure that you stay on full all the time. So just keep doing those things that make you happy. You're filling yourself up with your own attention, your own love, your own power. And then when the boundary gets crossed or another example is someone says, hey, can you help me with this project? And you've got something else that you really, really wanted to do. And you say, okay, sure. And you instantly think of someone else ahead of yourself. I'm not talking about being selfish here. I'm just saying that when you, really, when you want to say no and you say yes, that is another example of I don't matter, mm -hmm. right? I'm yeah. not my priority. Yeah. You got to be your number one priority. Trust me, like if it's something like, let's say, for example, someone needs help with their resume. That's important. I love helping people. Please ask me for help because I want to help when I can. But I'm going to say today I need to, I have this to do for me. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. do this, but I've got time in my schedule tomorrow at this time. Boundaries. You got to prioritize yourself, Yeah. right? It's not about being selfish. It's just about caring for yourself, almost like you're in a relationship with yourself, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Because at the root, I think right of this self-love of this recognizing your value and your worth and your own innate inner power is about building that relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. Because again, to assert those boundaries means you have to know those boundaries. And that means you've got to understand yourself and develop this relationship with yourself, which I love what you said. It's on no one else, but you to make yourself happy, to understand what brings you joy, to allow yourself to tap into that. It really is on you. So I think for so many of us though, building that relationship with ourselves, uh, not easy, something I think is lifelong and beginning to understand and trust yourself. I think, especially if there's been um, trauma or hurt or disappointment or anger or um, heartbreak, whatever emotion, you know, runs the gamut in your life. Sometimes it's really hard to feel you can trust, you know, that relationship that you're building with yourself. And, and I'm curious, if you have any thoughts on how we can begin to strengthen that relationship with ourselves, for me, what comes to mind is um, journaling, meditation, connection, conversation. Um, but I'm curious what maybe has come to mind or, or what maybe has worked for you um, mm -hmm. that you share about strengthening that relationship with yourself. Cause I think it's at the root of everything. Absolutely. 100%. And you bring up a very good point. I, uh, journaling for me has been a really great way to connect with myself and it's mm -hmm. carving out that time. Like if you're in a relationship, think of it like this. You're in a relationship with yourself. When you're in a relationship with your partner, what do you do to build that relationship? Well, you say, we're going to go on date nights. We're going to spend time alone. If you have kids, you make a weekend together and drop the kids off with the parents. You have to do that with yourself. If you're always at work with your kids, with your partner, where's that time with you? So it's time spent alone doing what makes you connect more with yourself. And that's going to be unique to every individual. For me, I love taking walks by myself out in nature. You know, um, journaling, like you said, is one of my biggest ways of connecting with myself. I do it every morning. I try to journal at least three pages and just journal whatever, whatever comes to mind. It helps me reflect on things. Maybe I work through an issue or there's something positive happening in my life. I want to focus on gratitude, whatever it is. It's that connection time with me. There's nothing pulling my attention and energy away. It's coming back to me. And so you're, mm -hmm. you're again, pouring your love back into yourself and you're also getting to know yourself better. And I think taking space and time just to be alone whenever you can is a really great way to do that. Yeah. 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 I think so too. There's something you said earlier about it's just as important to know what fills us up when it comes to self-love as it is to know what drains us. And I know in the book, you talk about these seven different saboteurs, things that sabotage our self-love. And I think we've touched on quite a few of we them. Have. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I have some of them written down. It's never saying no, having these self-limiting beliefs, needing external validation or approval, um, letting guilt over, override you, ignoring mm -hmm. your intuition. There's a couple of more, but this one about ignoring your intuition, I think is so interesting because it, it, it reminds me of what you talked about probably the very beginning of our conversation of um, there are these signs or things that pop up that tell you like, oh, this is not the right thing for me. This is not the real, right the real relationship. I'm not supposed to be here right now, but it's really hard sometimes to trust that element of intuition, especially if it means you're walking away from something that's known or familiar 
and instead, right. Allowing yourself to walk into, um, the unknown. And I know that this, this is so much of your story and your journey, you know, from when you were a teenager to where you are now, but I'm curious about this piece about intuition. I'm trying to formulate the question in my mind because sometimes our intuition shows up as like physical things. Like you have a physical reaction, you have an emotional reaction to something. Um, and I've had moments where my body will physically respond in the moment where I am not valuing myself, not trusting myself in a way that I know I should be. Um, and so I'm curious about this piece about not ignoring your intuition when it comes to self-love, not ignoring your instincts. Maybe there isn't a question. Maybe it's just, mm -hmm. maybe it's something for us to talk about because I think it's a piece of, of self-love that we, we don't often touch, touch on enough. I totally agree. And it's huge. I have to say, I, um, that's a, something I practiced very early on in my life mm -hmm. and pretty much by my thirties, I was mastering that Ooh, that's put so this good. way. I, so I, good. that it was such a huge part of the journey mm -hmm. for me. We, as women, especially if we're taught to people, please, but even as people, and it doesn't matter who you are, guy or girl, uh, our parents teach us to please them essentially, right? Mm -hmm. Comply with the rules. Don't make a scene, be yeah. quiet, yeah. Uh, you know, go with the flow. Don't yeah, behave all the, the way you want to behave, right? Mm -hmm. You can't behave how you want to behave. That's right. That's wrong. That's good. That's bad. And so pretty soon you start to not trust yourself. yourself. Yeah. And so we are taught to not trust ourselves. Isn't that crazy? It's so wild because in an essence, you're behaving as a young kid, like who you are, like I'm loud, I make a lot of noise or I'm super quiet or I'd, I'd like to be on the playground with other people or I don't. And for some reason, it doesn't always line up with what our parents want or what society says. And then you're taught, no, don't do it that way. And the way you internalize it is, oh, I'm wrong. I'm bad. I, you know what I mean? It's, it exactly. becomes like an I statement. Cause as a kid, you don't, you don't know any different. And then this is where the fun and learning comes in as an adult, when you're like, oh, that wasn't about me. That was about somebody else. But yeah, like you're right. Like we're taught from a very young, young age to internalize this piece of, uh, you can't trust the way you want to show up. Right. And the truth is sometimes as kids, we don't know the best way to act or, or at, be at a restaurant. It's not appropriate to throw your napkin across the table, right? There are things we just don't know, but it's a journey. You're so right. We start to internalize it from a very young age. So you hit on two points there. That's also not just not trusting your instinct, but it's also the need for external validation. We're yeah. also taught that as children. Yeah. It's about pleasing them. Because if I want love, if I want uh, to feel acceptable, mm -hmm. I have to please them. And that means I also have to please everybody else. And so it's that need for external validation that we're trained to do from a very early age. So the trusting of the instinct for me came in. I, I'm a scientifically minded person. I like to notice patterns and I like facts. And, and so um, I started to notice a pattern. Like when I wouldn't, when I had a feeling it was an instinct, a, a little voice, whatever you want to call it, that said, do this or don't do that. And I didn't go with it. I was always wrong. And so I, mm. I'm like, the math, this plus this would have equaled that. But instead, I didn't, you know, I should have listened to my instinct. And mm -hmm. so one day, literally just one day, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try the opposite. I'm just going to go with it. Every single time I have a little hint of a, a, an inclination of, there's a clear something saying, don't do that. Don't let that stranger in the door. Don't, you know, take that job. It doesn't feel right. You know, on paper, it looks good, but you're in the interview and it just feels, the energy feels weird. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in situations like that where I didn't pay attention and that job was not the right job for me. So I just started listening to it and I'll tell you, uh, it was always right. And it even didn't make sense most of the time mm -hmm. I've made massive, massive, massive decisions, but because I got to the point where I trusted myself and did all of that learning that told us I wasn't to be trusted. When I learned that I am to be trusted, my instincts do know what's best for me, even if it doesn't make sense. And I just went with it. Life is so much more in the flow. It's so much more beautiful. Mm -hmm. I've had, you know, I have my GED. I, 
you know, I went, I went, I quit a very great job that I got to, you know, well over six figures. Um, and I ended up quitting, made no sense, but my instinct told me to, and I mm -hmm. followed it and I ended up starting a company and I, uh, it was just a home-based business. I sold it in late 2019 for half a million dollars. So, you know, the book is called, I love me more, how to find happiness and success mm -hmm. through self-love there. I share the story in my book and I won't get into details here, but how choosing self-love and self-value allowed me to sell my business for half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have happened if I didn't have such a strong sense of self-worth. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, it's a very <laughs> instinct is very important. There's a Everything. bunch of really deep concepts in there that we're just touching on the surface of, but as you can, as you're pointing out, it's definitely a journey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the end of the book, you, you talk about creating a self-love loop mm -hmm. for yourself. And, uh, I think what you just shared about finding success through self-love is probably a beautiful example of what a self-love loop actually is. But um, I don't want to spoil it for people because I, I want them to read the book, but can you give us a little preview or idea about what this self-love loop is and maybe how we can um, just begin to create one for ourselves so that our self-love touches every aspect of our mm, lives? Yeah. Well, I have a couple concepts. The one I've mentioned is the power container. Truly, that is a beautiful self-love loop because if you can just tune in to your power container, if you think of it like that, what have I done to fill up? How do I feel today? Just monitor that. Um, am I feeling drained? Mm -hmm. Journal. What am I feeling drained about? Well, I you know, maybe someone crossed a boundary. You just reflect on your day. If you get in the habit of reflecting on it every single day, you can start to realize what's draining you. Maybe you worked too many hours when you should have told your boss, look, I, I can't, I need to, you know, I need some time for me or whatever, whatever it is that's draining you, you have to notice. And then also, what have I done to fill up? Have I been practicing uh, self-care? Have I been spending time with myself? Have I been giving myself my own love or have I been giving it to everyone else? It's really just tuning in and realizing that, you know, your love is your power. You have the control over it, you can let everything take your attention and your power away, mm -hmm. or you can put that energy back into yourself. That is a beautiful self-love loop right there. Mm, yeah. That journey of pouring that energy back into yourself, mm -hmm. uh, recognizing moments where you've given that energy away and now you want it back. And that, that's so much of what the self-love um, journey is. And I think the timing of our conversation is so wonderful. It's going to come out uh, the day after Valentine's Day, which I just love the trend that Valentine's Day has taken of being not so much necessarily about romantic love, but being about love with friends and family and this element of self-love for yourself too. And so I'm just so curious. I know the book comes out relatively soon, right? Well, what do you hope people will take away from your new book? Uh, when, yeah, when it comes out it. on International Women's Day, March. Oh my God, 8. I love that. Isn't that it's awesome? Wonderful. It's a great day. I yeah. love that universal timing. Uh, so what I just, I want women, truly, I'm going to sum it up in a nutshell. I, I My goal is for women to know their worth and their mm -hmm. value. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't come from everybody else and what anyone else thinks of you. It doesn't come from how long your nails are or how long your eyelashes are or how big your lips are. I love beauty on the outside, but it's not about that. Your value and your worth comes from how you feel about yourself. Mm. That's it. And uh, the more you value yourself, the more others will value you. And it has nothing to do with external appearances. So, you know, we spend so much time. I mean, think about all the maintenance that, you know, society wants us to put in our, you know, our hair gets colored and our, you know, Botox and the clothes and the nails. And I mean, it takes so much time. If you really, mm -hmm. you know, I would challenge some of your listeners to, you know, think about, do a, do a quick calculation per week, per month. How much time do you spend on the external stuff versus the internal? Because, you know, truly spending that time, the more time you spend with yourself and the more you pour back into yourself, the more you love yourself, the more you feel worthy and valuable, and then it all creates that loop. Now mm -hmm. you get 
paid more because you're valuing yourself more. Now you get into better relationships because you won't spend time with those that don't value you. It's this beautiful loop. So yeah. Yeah. yeah beautiful. Jenna, this has been such a wonderful conversation. I think really at the core of this conversation has been about how you can embrace your own value and your own yeah. power um, so that you can really start to embody this, this idea of, I love me more, which yeah. I think is so, so powerful. So to close out this conversation, I would, I would love to ask you the question. I ask everyone that comes on seek the joy podcast and uh, you might've already answered it, but I'll, I'll flip it to you anyway. It's uh, what, are, what is your biggest dream? Oh, my biggest dream. Oh my goodness. That's a, that's a good one. And um, a big one. It's a big question too. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know if I, I, you know, for me, I'm all about living life to your fullest potential. Mm -hmm. My biggest dream is to be whomever I was born in this world to be at my fullest potential, you know, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, I'm here for a reason. I'm a, a, a beautiful uh, creation of God and an extension. We all are extensions of God. We're all children of God. And so to be what God or the universe brought us here to be fully without all these things that hold us back from being our true selves, if I can not only be that for myself, but also that for everybody else uh, and help others feel uh, comfortable Mm -hmm. being their authentic selves and having had anything to do with it. I will, I will have, that'll be the biggest dream for me. That'll, that'll be a job well done in, yeah. in and of itself. Jenna, this has been so, so wonderful. And, and self-love I think is, is one of those words we hear a lot, especially right now in mainstream society, but really it's an opportunity to reflect, to make it a practice, to make it something that you choose on a daily basis. So I am just so glad that we connected and had this conversation where, where can everybody find you connect learn more, uh, maybe pre-order your book, which will come out in about a month. So yeah, I'd love it if you could share where, where everybody can find you. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. The easiest way to connect with me is through my website, which is jenna-banks.com. There will be all my uh, social uh, connections or links or whatever you call it. Um, <laughs> I am on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on TikTok a little bit, uh, LinkedIn. So pretty much everywhere. But, uh, and I do share a ton of you know, once you get the book, yes, but please connect with me also on social because, it, you know, I, for me, when I read a book, I read it a whole bunch of times to get it mm. to absorb, but sometimes it's also good to get information other ways. So I try to help give reminders about you know, being in a state of self-love and just talking about it different ways through social and on my blog and through articles and such. So I would just encourage everyone to connect with me uh, on social. Perfect. Everything will be in the show notes. So it'll be so easy for everyone to find you connect and learn more. And Jenna, thank you so much again. This was so wonderful. I'm excited to share this one. Thank you so much for having me, Sydney. I appreciate it. Seek the Joy podcast is a production of Seek the Joy Media and created, produced, and hosted by me, Sydney Weiss. You can tune into all of our episodes on your favorite podcast platform. And if you're enjoying the show, hit follow and leave us a five-star rating and review. Make sure to join the community, join the conversation on our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We are at Seek the Joy Podcast everywhere. And don't forget, you can actually watch today's new episode and all of our episodes on our brand new YouTube channel. Click that link in the show notes to subscribe and tune in. As always, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you right back here next week for another Seek the Joy Tuesday.